Hi, Moms Making Six Figures. Today, I am here with my friend, Christy Arias of The Goddesses Project, and I'm excited for you to hear this episode. I think that as women, you are going to take a lot out of some of the little points that Christy makes in what she does with photography, and it's incredibly impactful. Um, I think all of us have looked at photography in different ways over the years. Hopefully, you'll get to see it through her eyes in this podcast, and it will open you up to, if not shooting with her, maybe shooting with someone that can do the same thing for you. So enjoy this episode. Welcome to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast, where it's all about real women, real stories, real inspiration. And now your host and creator of Moms Making Six Figures, Heidi Bartolotta. So I'm with my friend, Christy. Hi. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming in for this. I'm really excited. I've been excited about this ever since you agreed to it. So. (laughs) I've been nervous, so but it's fun. I'm so excited to be here because you're on the opposite side. It's totally, I'm never on this side of the camera. Yeah, <laughs> it's really cool. Thank you. It is really cool. I'm feeling better already, though. So let's start with your background. Tell me how how did you end up in photography? Oh, I was an elf for Santa. <laughs> And I love making people feel good and smile. And uh, I thought I wanted to be an elementary school teacher because of that. Went for one semester and dropped out and went straight to arts college to become a photographer. So I remember asking my dad, can I, can people like make a living and do forever as a photographer? Because I'd only done it for Santa and the Easter Bunny. Mm -hmm. And I just remember being like, is that a, is that a real thing? As I'm like crying, sitting on the edge of my bed. And my dad being an entrepreneur says, honey, if, if you do exactly what brings you so much joy every day, you will be living a richer life than I ever have. And he doesn't remember this moment, but I remember exactly where we were sitting and that being a pivotal moment in my life of just chasing photography because it made me feel so happy to be in it. What amazing wisdom. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was. It was a big moment in my life. So what did that journey look like for you? Because we're going to talk a lot about what you do right now okay. in a little bit, I like but this. I, but I want to hear the journey to get there. Okay. Well, so I went to school in Cincinnati and to an arts college and I went to school at night because during the day I was working for Life Touch and Prestige Portraits where I would go into the schools in the morning and be hustling and bustling at like 5 a.m. to do school portraits. And then I was doing senior portraits in the studio and, uh, and then going to school for it at night did that um, through my college career. And then as soon as I got out, I applied to work with a world-renowned photographer out of Lexington, Kentucky. And they were starting up a studio. So I went there, did that for a couple of years, and then met a boy at Disney World. (laughs) Met a boy. (laughs) Kind of sidetracked my life a little bit (laughs) and moved to D.C. And again, I was working for uh, another photography chain there. And then I just decided, I want to start just doing this for me. And I let it all go to where I just started following my own passion in photography and doing what felt right to me and what I was being called to at any given point in my life. So Mm -hmm. if it were, if it was weddings, if it was babies, you know, if it was business, and now goddess, you know, Mm -hmm. and animals too. There's even been a moment in there where it was all about dogs, because they're amazing, Mm -hmm. you know? So my journey has, my photography has really followed me along in my life journey. And that as long, as long as I'm supposed to be in that space and that time of what I'm photographing at that time, I will be there. I will serve, I will enjoy it. And then the next thing's going to come along that I'm supposed to move into. Mm -hmm. You are definitely doing what you should be doing right now. I don't do anything. I don't feel Mm -hmm. a thousand percent joy in. So let's talk about goddess. Yeah. Because that's how you and I were introduced. Yeah. And honestly, when I was introduced, I was like, Ooh, I know. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> so 
I know. So out of my comfort zone. I know. Um, and then I got on the phone with you because I finally gave in. And then you asked me to come up with my word and I was so uncomfortable. Yeah. And it was probably ended up being one of the most freeing things that I've done. Good. So you you are very gifted, not only behind the camera, but in helping women to prep for that. So I kind of look at you as freeing women through photography mm-hmm. because you get to see an entirely different version of yourself. Yeah. Um, so talk about how you ended up there. What is it? How did you end up creating? Well, I ended up creating it because w- we have another line of photography that when the pandemic hit, it shut down. All mm. of our studios ended up shutting down. And then... Um, during that time, as you know, we became closer to our girlfriends. We became closer to our friends. We were finding different ways to connect with each other. And one of my girlfriends says, you're going to think I am crazy, but I want us to travel through these three cities and photograph all of my best friends that really inspire me and enrich my life. I'm so grateful for them. Um, And I want them to see in themselves what I see in them. And I was like, no, that's not crazy. That's amazing. And then then I stepped back and got a little nervous. Like, who am I? Who am I to, like, do this for these women? And then, you know, self-sabotage. And then you bring yourself back around. Like, no, no, you're being asked to do this because someone else sees something in you. You need to step up to the plate. Mm -hmm. And so what I didn't know is in my world, I'm like, I'm a great photographer. I love communicating with people. I know that I'm a trusting human being and that I can hold space. I just need to go in and do that for each of these women and just be present. What I didn't know was what it was doing on the other side. Mm -hmm. And this was before the project had actually gained its purpose yet and the the work that goes in before the photo shoot. So all the work we did before your photo shoot wasn't even happening yet. These women were just showing up with like laundry bags of clothes and nervous. <laughs> you know, I hadn't given them anything except we're having a party, you know, we're, we're all girlfriends getting together to do this. And on the other side, uh, and during the shoot, the women were like next to tears, just wanting to release Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, oh, my gosh, she's asking for my permission right now. I need to give her the permission. And they would start to mirror me. Mm -hmm. And I would see how freeing that was. And they would, like, some of them would cry from it. You know, it was just open. Like you said, it would just open you up. And they all said, you can't, Christy, you have to keep doing this. This changed my life. One said, I was a different woman before this, and now that I know the parts of myself that I know and I got to experience from this shoot, I can't go back. And it, and it, she was a new woman afterwards. So I didn't stop, and I allowed because it was only been it was only last year, 2020 was the first full year of doing it, and they all they all pulled together groups of women in their circles that they wanted to experience this. And it carried us through the year in that way of changing lives and helping women in that way. Mm -hmm. I read a quote once that said, when you do something that touches someone's soul, it fulfills you. Yeah. And I, I watched you do that number one with my best friend. Um, but also with the other women that I was around in that shoot. And it was interesting for me because some of them I didn't know going into that shoot. We were all kind of pulled together. Yeah. But talking with them afterwards, they were so much more open to share after their session with you. Uh-huh. Um, it was really impactful for me. So let's talk a little bit about just the project as a whole. And you're now moving into your second year, I uh-huh. guess, your second full year. Uh-huh. And um, what what are you, what what is your goal with this now that you've realized that this is something that's so special? What are you, what are you planning on doing with it? Okay, but you touched on something so important that I have to go back to, and then I will. Um, you touched on how the women were so open afterwards. Mm -hmm. And I think that is so, so important. And it's actually like, I feel like this project is actually opening this door that we've always known is there as women, but we don't know how to have access to it or get to it. 
we have so much in common as women. We have all the same issues. We have all the same insecurities. Like we are a bag of mess. Each of us, no matter how beautiful we are on the outside, we are, it's all there. And we all think we're hiding it to protect ourselves and to feel better because somebody else doesn't have it. But the reality is, is when we come together in this space of being vulnerable and open and sharing, uh, everybody else starts to come out and talk about it and meet you in that space. And then you're lifting each other up because it feels so good to not be so different or odd or, you know, or hide it, hiding it, (laughs) all of it. Yeah. And so you, you, it's almost like you speak it, you're together, you're not hiding it anymore. And then it goes away and then you're free. It's that, that wall that we have built ourselves is gone and it's let go. Um, So it's funny, even as we sit here and talk about it, and you mentioned it earlier, the photography is just an avenue of this Mm -hmm. self-discovery, self-love and care that we get to have through this project. And the women coming together is the most healing part because each of us are doing the work. I'm really, I'm really happy that you got to experience that and feel that. But I do think, and this was really interesting for me, seeing the photography afterwards, because Obviously, I've been on camera quite a bit. And so I thought, I mean, I've worked with a lot of photographers. Mm -hmm. It was very interesting to see the photography afterwards because there were definitely pieces of me that you captured that no other photographer has ever captured. Um, And I think a lot of that is, as you said, you give them the freedom to express something Mm -hmm. that maybe someone else wouldn't, right? Yeah. All you have like to do you is were ask. dancing with me. I did dance. With yes, you were I dancing do. with me. I love dancing. <laughs> I love dancing. Well, so what I have what I've learned over the years and even as a child is you know how we're always told ask childlike questions. Mm-hmm. Right? But do we really as adults? Yeah. You no. know, we get in our own head about what are they going to think of me? Mm-hmm. I am weird. I know that. And I just ask the questions, you know, and it's because I want you to feel good. It's because I, I, I already can like see how beautiful you are, even if you can't see it in yourself. Mm -hmm. And I really, really know that all I have to do is ask the questions and go through the journey with you. And I love that space. And so I think if we went around, you know, even as in the groups, if we ask each other these childlike questions and they're in safe space and for good, good intention, sacred, you know, space, Mm -hmm. uh, the outcome is only going to be really good and really beautiful. Okay, now I'm going to go back to my question. Yes, you are. What am I this next year? Yeah, so tell me about the next year. Oh, gosh. And then I'm going to ask you about motherhood, too. So, Oh, yeah, yeah. that has a lot to do with this project, too. Mm -hmm. Actually, that's a lot. Um, So this next year, it's funny. So last year planned itself out completely. All on its own, it booked itself up to where I only did one shoot a month, where it's a max of four to five women. This next year, I have not opened it yet, but I've allowed people to place interest in it. Mm. So I have a little bit of a list of interest. I'm going to open my calendar up four to five times a year, and I'm going to allow for about four days on each of those weeks to book up. And we're going to run a contest Mm -hmm. for everyone to um, kick off the new year in the bookings. Yes, we are going to run a contest. Yeah. Do you want me to talk about that? Sure. Talk about the contest. (laughs) Okay, I'm excited about this because we're going to kick off the new year Mm -hmm. for 2022 with you. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be giving away uh, three prizes to three different goddesses. Okay, Mm -hmm. Um, I'll only go over the first one because we can read about the others on the website. But the main prize winner, it's going to be a $3,500 value. And it is going to be flight, stay, it's going to be makeup, the photo shoot, and $2,000 towards a piece of wall art for the winner. Okay. So now I'm sure you're asking, like, what do you have to do to get this? How do you enter? <laughs> okay. I love this. So 
what we're going to do, and we'll have the we'll have the question, I'm sure, at the bottom mm-hmm. of the podcast and everything. So what I want you to do is think about a side of yourself that you want to step a little bit deeper into. And sometimes that's even a little bit of a scarier side or mm-hmm. a challenging side. I want to know what that side of yourself is. And if you were to step into that, how would that change your life? Mm-hmm. Okay. So what we'll have you do is answer that question and include a photograph of yourself. Um, and then there, there will be a phase to where you can, all the submissions can come in for that. And then when submission closes, then we're going to encourage you to share this story. Mm-hmm. Okay. And what that is going to do is it's going to empower, just like we were talking about a earlier. The more open you are and vulnerable, and it's scary to Mm -hmm. be that way in the world. So I understand that this could be scary a little bit to think of sharing this, Mm -hmm. but what ends up happening, you get empowered by your followers and they start to help you build you up and see a side of yourself that maybe you didn't see, but you're also giving other women permission to feel for themselves, permission to step into um, themselves in that way, and also know that they're not alone in this journey. It ends up connecting you as women. So you're going to share this piece of yourself and get with all your social media platforms, email it out and get likes from it. Okay. And then by the end of it, whoever has the most likes, because I can't vote because I'm going to love every single one of you. Right. You know I do, because I believe in every single woman and what it is that they need to step into. Um, so you're going to try to get the most likes on your post, and whoever does at the end of that will end up winning that prize. And there's three prizes. There's overall. three, yeah. So let's talk about, so let's give them an example, and we can use me. So yeah. you, when you ask me, what side of myself did I want to see? I honestly didn't have an answer for you. I know. I remember <laughs> we had to sit there for a minute. And, you know, that happens all the time, too, where it's a discovery. You know, you uh-huh. have to sit. And who asks you those questions? Yeah, no one has ever People asked me about that question. That. Yeah. And so the word that I came up with based on just some of the stuff that was going on in my life was playfulness. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that was hysterical to me is you want us to, up to the photo shoot Mm -hmm. every day, tell yourself, not just you, but the people (laughs) around you, I'm a playful goddess. Mm -hmm. I'm a playful goddess. My daughter. But look what that's pulling out. (laughs) My daughter, I would look at her in the car and she'd say, don't say it! And I was like, I'm a playful goddess. And my sister was even text messaging me. I haven't heard your voice today. (laughs) So it was so funny, though, Mm -hmm. the things that it brought out in the people around me. Mm -hmm. And also um, just the things that we were doing. Now, I I already do a lot of, like, dates with my my daughter, Becca. And... um, when we were at the we were at the trampoline park and I was bouncing up and down going, I'm a playful goddess. And she was like rolling her eyes. But I do think that it was really good for her. Mm-hmm. Like I was I, afterwards, I was kind of stepping back and thinking, oh, my gosh, this was not only was it really good for me, but it was for me. It's always my kids like it was really good for Becca. So mm-hmm. it's a really beautiful example of. There's a couple things happening here. One, you're sh- we're showing our children, mm-hmm. you know, a side of ourselves and who they can be and that they can do that and have courage to do that, stepping into themselves now and moving into, you know, being adults. Mm-hmm. And then two, when we take care of ourselves first, when we love ourselves and lift ourselves up first, it pours over into everything else, into everyone else in our life, in our work, our personal life. So you were doing that as silly as it felt because affirmations are silly, you know, Mm -hmm. but the reactions that you were getting out of it and the feeling you were getting out of, you're even cracking up right now telling me about it. And playful was your word. Your playfulness is spilling out. You've been telling me about it, so it's working. Mm-hmm. So it was you were you were creating this beautiful effect of happiness and silliness just from allowing yourself to do that. So that's gorgeous. We don't do that enough in life. Yeah. It's hard. We it get is. stuck. Well, and life can be heavy sometimes. It is. It mm-hmm. is. Yeah. yeah. And it yeah. takes work. I remember saying, I don't know if I told you this or not, but everything hard in our life 
and everything beautiful and easy in our life took time to get to both of those places. So you have to take time to get to the good. Mm -hmm. And it's so easy to put ourselves in a space of taking time to feel stressed, you know, to feel overworked, you know, to feel tired. We put so much work into that. Well, okay, well, when are we going to start putting time into feeling joy, into feeling worthy, to feeling courageous, strength, funny, powerful? You know, we have to do those things too, or we're not going to get to that point. And And it makes for such a richer life. It does. Mm -hmm. That's just the thing Mm -hmm. is that travels further out of us than the stress the heavy, you know, but that's what we've been trained in society to put our work into because that's what success is. That's how we're going to get to it. But the reality is only you feel you. And I don't know about you, but I want to feel good every single day (laughs) (laughs) about what I'm doing and my choices I'm making in life. So there's a couple questions that I always ask my guests, so I have to throw this in. So motherhood, let's talk about motherhood. Oh, yeah. And really... What would be your best advice to other mothers? What is your one piece of wisdom that you would pass on to someone else? Um, They're still going to love you even if you take a little bit of time for yourself. Like, I think they love me more when I take a little bit of time to love myself. That was a huge hurdle for me to overcome. Mm -hmm. And that was a big... It was a big eye-opening awareness for me when I started doing this project because I was like, I was PTA. I was, I was in my kids' lives. Like I was the, the, I was not helicopter, but I was in it. You know, I made sure my work schedule worked around them a thousand percent. They were first and then everything else. And then me at the very end. So, but when I started taking time for me, um, their lives with their dad became richer And then the jokes that I get now because of that relationship are hilarious. Like they're at home watching rated R movies right now. (laughs) Like that, it's hysterical. And that wouldn't have happened otherwise. Um, But I'm taking care of me now. So when I'm with them, our life is a lot richer. And I think Mm -hmm. as moms, we don't, we think we're taking something away from them by taking care of ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. I mm-hmm. I interact with so many women and have for so many years. And it's interesting to watch the ones that prioritize self-care. Yeah. Because as you said before, it really overflows into the people around them when they do. Yeah. yeah. It does. Yeah. Okay. And then the other one is book or podcast. Do you do one? Do you do both? Do you do any? And which one, if any, would you recommend? Okay, this is a trick question <laughs> because I do book on audio and podcasts. <laughs> so book on audio, um, the book that changed my life, and I tell a lot of women going through this experience is Goddesses Never Age by Christian Northrup, which mm-hmm. was given to me by a girlfriend. And I, and so just a, a little backstory to that though, I meet a lot of women uh, law of attraction, I meet a lot of women that have lost their mom at a young age. I lost my mom at a young age. So I never got to know my mother as a woman, meaning I didn't know, like, I don't know. I'm walking into this abyss of the unknown of what I will look like as a woman, what, what, how the body changes, you know, menopause, like, how you're supposed to feel like I don't have that person to call ever, you know, if it's dealing with hardships with my husband or my children or any of that. I don't have that woman in my life at all. And so I find some of the women that come through this after a little bit of discovery that we're, we're, there's a lot of us that don't have that. And I didn't know it, but this book filled in, like, I felt like she was the mother that I didn't get to have. It filled in everything for me. It filled in so many of the blanks of how to love myself and what to expect and how to feel beautiful. She uses the word delicious a lot, how to feel delicious in life, you know, and let let all of the noise go away. And so um, I highly recommend that book to everyone because it changed my life. 
That's awesome. Yeah. So what am I not asking you? I don't think it's a matter of, you know, you not asking me any questions, but I have a question for you. Okay. Yeah. Let's turn this table. Um, when you, you said that a pivotal moment for you was seeing your photographs Mm -hmm. for you. I wanted, and you said it was because you got to see different sides of yourself. So, and that you've worked with many other photographers, all of that good stuff. Um, But when I think about that, what what was, when you, when you go back to that in, in that space where we were seeing the photographs, you know, what were you seeing in yourself that you hadn't seen before? Did you see that side of yourself in the mirror? Had you seen that side of yourself before? Um, so yes, I've seen that side of myself before, but not in a photograph that you can look at and have it look back at you, mm-hmm. right? Because most photography for me has always been around business or family. Mm-hmm. So it's mm-hmm. always been really related to something where I am a certain person, right? Yes. And in the photography that you do, it was more just, let's see every side of you and be playful. And And the interesting thing is that it was a two of the more serious ones that I actually was drawn to the most, but they were serious in a different way than I'd ever seen myself before. So I just thought it was really powerful because, I mean, you said this and the the open nature of the way that you photograph. And I will say to you that in that session, you kind of watch and then amplify something that starts to come out. So like when I started to dance a little bit, that's when you started really dancing. It was like, okay, here's this side of you. Let's really bring it out so I can get it on camera. Um, And I just think that you're very gifted in that. Thank you. Thank you. How do you, knowing where your wall art is going Mm -hmm. in your home and the locations that you chose and the photographs that Mm -hmm. you chose, um, as you are choosing that, how were you feeling in that it's going to empower you Mm -hmm. in your day-to-day? Because that's specific to the photographs that you chose. That's very important because that's what you need to tap into in your day to day when you start your morning mm-hmm. to move forward with that energy, you know? So what was it for you that you were seeing and feeling? Yeah. So the one that I'm the most excited about is the one that I chose for my bedroom. And it's a very light, playful side of me that doesn't come out a lot. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was this, this picture, and now I'm going to have to put it up at some point, (laughs) um, just was like, oh my gosh, I've never seen that side of myself. I know it's there. It generally only comes out with about two people in my life. Yeah. (laughs) Um, but yeah, I'm really excited about that one. Yeah. How do you feel when you're in that space, in that energy? Yeah. Uh, more free, just more joyful. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have a lot of joy anyway. But it's a different expression of joy, I think, in that. So Yeah. Yeah. What did your daughters think when they saw it? Oh, my gosh. That was really interesting. Um, They both actually chose the same one, and it's the very serious one of me. And one of them said, that's the gorgeous you that most people don't see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now you're going to make me cry. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. What did that mean to you to be able to? It was just interesting that? to hear the way somebody else sees you, but especially your children. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Isn't it, you know, people tell us here and there when we allow them, when we give them space to tell us how they feel about us. Um, it's almost easier to not put ourselves out there to be vulnerable to receive that. Mm-hmm. Um, but once we do, it's, it's, it's really incredible isn't it? And I, it's an interesting thing is it took me a while to process it. And then I went into her room and I kissed her on the head and I said, it, I just want you to know that meant so much to me. And she's like, oh, like it was nothing for her. Like, oh, that's yes. just, yeah. <laughs> it's just the way I see you. <laughs> I'm like, so it was, yeah, it, it was, was very, easy for it her. was very interesting. Yeah. 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 
I want to start, I, I don't know about you, but mm-hmm. I want to start experiencing myself the way everybody else gets to experience me. Mm-hmm. You know, one, one of my goddesses once said, oh, she's looking at her photographs. She was hilarious. She goes, oh, my friends get to enjoy this side of me all the time. Lucky them. <laughs> I don't get to enjoy this side of me, you know? And I thought, that's so true. Uh-huh. You know, like if we can, if we can, if we can stop and acknowledge and see ourselves from the outside in that light and start enjoying ourselves mm-hmm. in that way, um, that would be, I want that. That would be really powerful. Yeah. It's powerful for other people. Yeah. Too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What do you think? Um, okay. So another hurdle, which I know through this project is having the thought of having a photograph of yourself up is really Really uncomfortable, really uncomfortable (laughs) uncomfortable. and really hard. (laughs) But there is a big, big reason as to why we do this. Mm -hmm. Um, You don't have yours up yet because you haven't gotten it yet, but I know that you're processing it because you've seen it on your wall already with the way that I'm able to show you. Um, how do you think that that's going to help you or affect you in your day to day seeing that wall art of yourself up every day? Yeah, I have no idea other mm-hmm. than I know I'll smile every time that I look at it. Yeah. 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 Um, I know on the other side, because when we started this, my girlfriend was very adamant about they have to have a large wall art piece of themselves up. Mm -hmm. I won't have anything else to do with it. It has to be one piece that's large because they have to look themselves in the face. And I was like, okay, I'm going to stand behind you (laughs) standing up for that because that's right. But I didn't realize the impact, again, it was going to have on the women. And some of them would even be like, uh, Christy, I, I, I know this is what we're supposed to do, but I can't do this. Yeah. And we made them do it. And I kid you not, every single goddess was so grateful afterwards, after spending time with it, because they said that it they were uncomfortable with the idea, but once it was up, they were still like, okay, okay. But then their family was like, wow. And it was fascinating to them because we put this idea of it being vain up, you know, or uh, just it just not being right, you know, Mm -hmm. for us to have a photograph of ourselves up, but yet everyone else in the family loves it, but we're struggling with it. Yeah. We're also struggling with it because we don't think we're beautiful enough, Mm -hmm. you know? And so, um, and who does that? Who puts a picture of themselves? I don't know. That's what I kept thinking when you were telling me to pick one. I'm like, "Uh, but you did it. Every, I don't know, maybe in my closet. Yes. <laughs> yes, which a lot of women do. It's a good. That's a really good space, though, because it's where we're getting ready and mm-hmm. it's where we shed all of our layers and we're authentic. So it is a good space still, as odd as that sounds. Yeah. It is. Um, but something that came to light was when you think about the photographs that we put up of ourselves in our home or anything, the smaller it is, the less value it tends to hold. Like we tend to go small with things that don't hold a lot, a lot of value. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you think about the things that are really big in our home, we tend to hold, they hold a lot of value in our lifestyle, you know, be it the TV, Mm -hmm. you know, what are we surrounding ourselves with in our home? Yeah. That's why I have massive pictures of my girls everywhere. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Yes. They're even like same thing with my boys. There's too many pictures of us, mom. <laughs> I do the same thing with my boys because I believe that what we surround ourselves with becomes our norm. And mm-hmm. our and I wanted my children to be feel so loved. Right, yeah. you are everything to me, and so that is the truth. But that's funny now that I've just heard myself say that out loud. Well, what about me? Am yeah. I everything to me? Mm-hmm. Do I love me? Where am I, where am I representing that to myself and to my kids? You know, where am I showing them that they do want a strong partner in life, you Mm -hmm. know, that loves themselves, you know, in that way. And so, um, what this, what this project has done is made me realize that the photographs of myself painfully went up where I needed them to go. And it took my husband forcing me and picking them out to put them up because I had to look at myself every day. And it changed me. 
because Mm -hmm. what we surround ourselves with, it doesn't matter how uncomfortable we are at first, it becomes our norm. And then we start to fall in love with the things that are around us. So it's okay to be uncomfortable at first with seeing yourself, but challenge yourself to fall in love with you by surrounding yourself with the beautiful you, with the side of you that you want to dig deeper into and explore more and live in more. Not with the, you know, the frumpy, like, you know, photographs of yourself because you need, you want to be your best version of yourself and then tap into that all the time. Well, and this kind of brings us full circle to a conversation that you and I were having, not on screen, yeah, but that we're so much better when we get out of our comfort zone and we push ourselves and we be more courageous. And what does that do for your life and those around you that your lives that you impact? Yeah. We're just so much stronger together as people. And especially as women, when we can open up with each other and trust each other and be vulnerable because it's, we're all like, we all feel we, Mm -hmm. and we can just live, Honestly, we can lift each other up, fix each other's crowns, as I say all the time. It's just life is so much more delicious. Yes. (laughs) Thank you for doing this with me. Oh, gosh. Thank you so much for having me. This is so much fun. I'm so proud of you, too. I tell you every time I see you how proud of you I am. I still remember us at the very, very beginning of this and how you were like, "Eh, no. And then you let loose during that shoot. I knew it. And I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Yeah. Good job. (laughs) Thank you for listening to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, please take a moment and leave a review on iTunes. To learn more about Moms Making Six Figures, head over to momsmakingsixfigures.com. That's right, momsmakingsixfigures.com.